All right. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Mahmoud, and I am a Westlaw trainer, and <laughs> I am very loud as well. So thank you all for attending today. Uh, I have two solutions to cover today. The first one being Thomson Reuters Westlaw, which we will start the session off with today. And then the next solution we have is Westlaw Asia. So I'm going to start off with Thomson Reuters Westlaw. And by the way, if you have any questions, you can ask me at any time, either during the session or after. So Thomson Reuters Westlaw is a legal solution where you can find content for cases, statutes and court rules and regulations, and secondary sources. Secondary sources being journal articles. Statutes and court rules and regulations are your legislation. Everything you see on this home page is geared towards US law. Um, we also have a section uh, that's called international materials, which I will go through towards the end of this TR Westlaw session. So there are a few things I want to talk to you about today. And mostly these will be tips and tricks on how to find content quickly. That will be the focus of this session. So the first thing I want to point out to you is that wherever you are in Thomson Reuters Westlaw, if you want to return back to the home page, you click on the Thomson Reuters Westlaw logo. So if I click on it here, it will bring me back to my home page. The next thing I want to talk to you about is something that's quite useful, which is the search bar. There are two things I want to show you within the search bar. The first thing I want to talk to you about is that if you ask the search bar a legal question, it will give you a legal answer. This is something we call the West Answers. So I'll give you an example now. So I've asked Westlaw a question. What are the elements of fraud? And it's actually given me some options of what to search. Fraudulent inducement, fraudulent concealment, or the third one, what are the elements of fraud? I'm going to select the third one. By selecting the third question, when it loads, Westlaw is actually going to give me the answers to my question, right here at the top. What are the elements of fraud? It's telling me the elements of fraud are one, two, three, and four. So it's given me the answer I'm looking for based on US law. But usefully as well, it's also giving me the case from which this was created in US law. Also at well, it expands upon my answer down here, where it tells me the elements of a fraud claim are one, two, three, four, five. It was updated in a subsequent case, or rather a previous case, and it's giving me the link to the case here as well. These are the answers to the questions you are looking for. Now, I also, West search, West answers is something you can actually minimize because in relation to my search, I also have all of this content available to me. We have 10,000 cases from our results. We actually have a total of 67,000 results. So I'm going to reduce this one now. One of the best things about Westlaw is that when you type in a search question, it will give you your results. But right, all of your results are made up of cases, key numbers, briefs, and so on. At the top, we have something called Overview. When I click on Overview here, it's going to give me a list of results. And actually, the list of results are 15. This 15 results that we see on the screen here, we have cases, we have key numbers, which I'll explain what they are in a bit, trial court orders, and statutes. This overview of results are an overview of the best results from 
the 67,541. It's either, it's a complicated algorithm. It could be returning results that are the most important to your search. It can also be returning results for what most people click on when they do this type of search. So an overview page of results is a good place to start your research. Another thing that we have on the left-hand side are the filters for your results, like cases, for example. If I click on cases here now, now I'm just looking for the types of cases that we have. And just note, you can actually sort your cases by relevance, like the most relevant results in relation to your search. You can also sort it by date as well, so you can see it in chronological order. Within your results as well, if you scroll down on the left-hand side, you have the option to search within your results as well. So say, for example, we want to search for I've typed in moral guilt and conduct a search now. We had 10,000 results. I'm searching within those results. From 10,000 cases, I now went down to 66. So you can search within your results to really bring down the type of results. Focus in what you're looking for. Each of these materials on the left-hand side will have their own filter options. For cases, for example, you can filter by judge, you can filter by topic, you can put date restrictions, and you can also filter by jurisdiction as well. The next thing I want to talk to you about are key numbers. Now, does anyone know, has anyone seen key numbers before? Yes or no? Sorry, say that again. Here. So you will get it here. And in fact, I think you will get it for others as well. Let's have a look. Always on the left-hand side, right over there. So back to my point, has anyone ever heard of key numbers before? So say there is a case that you get on Westlaw. Every case has a lot of legal issues. Sometimes it could have five different legal issues, could be tort, could be criminal, for example. You can break that down, it could be battery, assault, could be murder as well. All of these are legal issues within a case. Anytime a case comes on to Westlaw, we analyze it and we see what are the legal issues that are talked about. Once you analyze that case, you assign it a key number. So we're looking at fraud. The key numbers for fraud, 184, key number three, 184, key number six, there are many different ones. This one is about actual fraud. This one is about constructive fraud. There are so many different ones. but. What's beautiful about key numbers is that every single case has been analyzed and all the key numbers assigned to that case are kept in an index. This is an index of cases. Now if I click on, say for example, elements of actual fraud intent, this is a specific key number. All the cases in this key number on Westlaw are now listed for you here. We have a total of 656 cases relating to this key number alone. So to break it down for you, you are conducting a search on the elements of fraud. You do this search on Westlaw, you might search within results, but you're looking for something very specific. With searching, it could take half an hour, or one hour to find exactly what you're looking for. But if you browse it by key number, all of the cases decided under that key number are listed out for you. So instead of spending half an hour, one hour looking for content and searching for content, use the key numbers to browse and see the list of everything you're looking for. This will save you a lot of time doing legal research. 
When you do a search, the key numbers are listed for you there. If you go on the home page, you will see key numbers is there on the left hand side under cases. Click on key numbers here and we'll give you a list of all the topics of law on Westlaw. Then say for example, you look for account. Then it will give you a breakdown of all the points of law in account. And now you can go through each of them to find cases relating to a very specific point of law. Trust me when I say key numbers for US Westlaw, We've gotten a lot of feedback saying this has saved a lot of people a lot of time doing legal research. So use it going forward if you're ever looking for points of law for the US. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about within the search bar is something we call natural language. Now, sometimes when people conduct searches on Westlaw, they just type in words. I'll give you an example. Prisoner exposure, secondhand smoke, liability. So I've just typed in this search, and when I conduct this search, I will get results. I'll get a lot of results. Because Westlaw is going to look for each word in my search and bring back results. But this sentence doesn't make sense, but it's still gonna give me back good results. But sometimes there are cases which don't use the exact words in your search. And I'm gonna give you an example of a case right now. But first, I'm gonna change my search. liability for prisoner exposure to secondhand smoke. It's essentially the same search, but it now is grammatically makes more sense. Now I'm gonna conduct a search. And it's the first result I want to talk to you about. This case, Helling and McKinney. So I'm gonna open up this case. And I'll explain to you the flag system in a minute. Thank you. So, Helling and McKinney was a very important case in the US that was decided in 1993. But, the reason why I chose this case, I typed in second hand at the top. There's only one result. And that result is actually in my search bar. Nowhere in this case, the second hand appear anywhere. But what does appear? Environmental tobacco smoke. So when you type in a question correctly, what is the liability for prisoner exposure to second hand smoke? Westlaw will look for synonyms, alternatives of the words used. So it's actually saying that out of all the results we have, this case is one of the most important cases in my search, which doesn't even have secondhand smoke. But it's telling me this case is important. Also, this is actually very, very useful as well, because if you type in like prisoner exposure, liability, secondhand smoke, a sentence which doesn't make sense, it won't pick up on alternatives for words. So you can use this by asking a question that's about maybe 80% grammatically correct, and it will start looking for alternatives. Also, within relation to my search here at the top, when I scroll down, you will see this green square bracket with an arrow. Westlaw is telling me that this paragraph is very important in relation to my search at the top. If you scroll down within the document as well, it will highlight other areas, which is telling you this one is very important in relation to my search as well. At the top of a document, of a case, it's giving you a synopsis. So this is a summary of the case. 
It's about one paragraph long. It's telling me the high level summary of what this case was. And then it's also telling me what the judgment was. Affirmed and remanded. When you scroll down even further, you will get the full transcript of the case. All these links to other statutes and regulations and possibly other cases you can click into as well. Now, one final thing to note about this case is the yellow flag at the top that you see on the screen there. That yellow flag on the top left. There is something here underneath the search bar called Powered by Keysight. If I click on it here, it will tell me what the yellow flag means for this case. And there are three types of flags. If you see a yellow flag next to the case, that means that the case has received some negative treatment from future cases, but it is still good law. It's not been reversed, it's not been overruled. Compare that with a red flag. If you see a red flag next to the case, that means that for one point of law, the case that we're looking at is no longer good law. So it's telling you the treatment the case has received. If you see the white flag with a blue stripe in between next to the case, that means that the case is being appealed to higher courts. In this case, it's being appealed to the US Court of Appeals or the US Supreme Court. So whenever you see a white flag next to a case, be careful, because you don't know what the judgment is going to be, so you can start monitoring that case. We also have the yellow flags that explains what it is for statutes and regulations, here, and also here for the red flag statutes and regulations. So we explain it. You have to click into a result, click on Powered by Keysight, to find out what the flags mean. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the home page. When you conduct a search on the home page, you are going to search for US law from cases all the way to arbitration materials. If you want to search for just cases or just secondary sources, and I'm going to click into secondary sources, you can do that now. Clicking on secondary sources, you'll see my search bar has changed at the top and that these are the secondary sources available. I want to highlight three secondary sources to you. The first one being law reviews and journals. You will have access to this here, and this is a list of all the law reviews and journals you will get access to as part of your subscription. You can actually start browsing it. We have a total of 1,046 law reviews and journals organized alphabetically. Next to each of them as well, there is an eye icon. This is an information icon. By clicking on this eye icon, it will tell you when coverage began. And in this case, this journal began in 2001. So this is, we've had content for 19 years, almost 19 years. The second journals I want to talk to you about is actually restatements and principles of law. You can click on it here in secondary sources and again, find the browse options for all the content that we have listed out on the screen here and all al organized alphabetically. The final journal that I would like to highlight to you is actually located under tools and resources. These are the world journals. And we have journals from all of these other jurisdictions, from Australia to the UK here. Moving on, I've talked to you about the search, two elements of the search, ask it a legal question and the natural language search. I've shown you the secondary sources. Now I want to talk to you about where you can find international materials. You're on the home page. Anything to the right side of this line, you have to click into to search. These are all add-on subscriptions, so you will need to be subscribed to it. What you have a subscription to is international materials. If I click on international materials here, now everything I search will be for these jurisdictions. These are mostly Commonwealth jurisdictions, four of them. 
we've got Australia, we've got Canada, we've got Hong Kong, and we've also got the UK. We've also got two other jurisdictions which are good materials to have. The European Union, all of its treaties, and all cases from all member states that refer to the European Union, we have content for that. And you also have content for Korea as well. The type of content that you have as well is listed on the bottom. We have cases, legislation, treatises are your books, journal articles as well, and so on. The browse option is similar as well. If I wanted to search for just cases, you can do that. Because everything you search for on the international materials page is searching for all of these jurisdictions and all of this content. If I click on cases now, now I'm just searching for cases for all of these jurisdictions. You can filter it down even further. If I click on the UK, now I'm just searching for UK case law. So you're eliminating all of unnecessary results and really focusing your search. Again, the information icon is available to you for each one of these types of cases. Let's say criminal appeal reports. By clicking on the information icon, and UK coverage is actually one of our strongest ones. For this one, it begins in 1909. But for case law in the UK, we have cases dating back to 1420. We have legislation dating back to 1246. So our coverage is very comprehensive for the UK, for example. Always click on the information icon to see the scope of coverage. Now, before I move on, does anyone have any questions on TR Westlaw, US content? Because we're going to move on to Westlaw Asia very shortly. This one, yes. Because you're searching it on the home page. If you search for it on the home page, secondary sources and law reviews and journals, this will be for US content. But on the right hand side, world journals, if you click here, that will show it for US content and international content as well. So see, world journals here, it includes content for the US as well. Let me click into it and see the scope of, scope of coverage. Yep. You can actually search all journals here by clicking on World Journals. So if you go back to this page and do a search here, you're searching across all journals. Any other questions? Okay. Now I'm going to move on to Westlaw Asia. Okay. Westlaw Asia is visually different, but there's a few functionalities that are a bit different that I want to highlight to you. The first off being content. Everything that you see on the home screen that you can access is what you have a subscription to. So you see India, Philippines, Korea, and the UK, they're grayed out. So you won't be able to access this content. But what you have access to is everything else. Australia all the way to Singapore. So you can access this. Let me walk you through what's available on Westlaw Asia. For Australia and New Zealand, what you will get access to for these two jurisdictions are cases. Only cases, but very comprehensive cases. For example, for Australia, we have cases dating back to the 1800s. F for Cambodia, Indonesia, and Myanmar, what, we have access, what you have access to are legislation. Last year, we had 250 pieces of legislation for these three jurisdictions translated into English. That number has grown. Every quarter, we add more for these jurisdictions. For Hong Kong, this is our strongest content on Westlaw Asia. 
We will have cases dating back all the way for Hong Kong. You'll have all the regulations in order, the legislation for Hong Kong. About 10 journal articles, avail 10 journals available for Hong Kong as well. It is our strongest content on Westlaw Asia for the ASEAN jurisdiction. The next one being Malaysia. Malaysia, again, you get cases, you get legislation, you get journals, and you get current awareness as well. This is the content aspect of Westlaw Asia. On Westlaw Asia, one of the best things about this homepage is that when you want to search, you have to select a minimum of one jurisdiction. But you can actually search two, three, or more. So say, for example, you search Hong Kong, Malaysia, let's say Singapore, you can search for content across all of these three jurisdictions. What will you be searching? It's saying all here. When we say all, at the top you will see we can searching for cases, legislation, journals, and current awareness. This is what you can search. If you want to search for cases for these three jurisdictions, you can actually just select cases on the home page. Or you can search for legislation on the home page or journals and so on. For more advanced search options, click into the relevant content type. So click into cases for more search options. The same for legislation. I will show you that later on in the session. Now, moving on to your search bar. When you conduct a search on Westlaw Asia, and let me select some search options for you. Okay. Your default search on Westlaw Asia is called a basic search. We also have natural language on Westlaw Asia. It's a little bit different here, which I will explain to you what it is. But your default search is a basic search. Now I've selected Hong Kong, Singapore, and Malaysia. Now I've typed in something here, minority shareholders' rights duties. Let me give you an example of what I want searched. Say for Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore, I want to find out what are minority shareholders' rights but not their duties. I'm going to search it across these three jurisdictions, and I'm searching across all content type. So all cases, legislation, journals, current awareness. It has brought back to me 924 results. On the left-hand side, we have some filter options. So you can actually bring this result number down. On the left-hand side, you will see filter by content type. 535 cases, 41 journals. I can select these and filter and bring this down. You can also filter it by jurisdiction. Then I want to see what results you have for Singapore or Malaysia or Hong Kong. You can add the filters here. But still, 924 results is a lot of results to go through. I want to bring this number down, and I can. In the help section at the top, I'm going to open this up. I want you to look for a table. This table right here. This table lists the terms and connectors available on Westlaw Asia. And by the way, this is available on Thomson Reuters Westlaw as well, the US Westlaw. If I go back, and open it up and click on advanced here, next to the search bar, it will list out all the connectors here for you. So on Westlaw Asia, it's in the help section, find this table. Now, let's go back to my search. For the three jurisdictions, I wanted to find out what are minority shareholders' rights, but not their duties. I just typed in minority shareholders' rights duties. When I go back to my results for that one, I had 924 results. You will see that every search, every word in my search appears. I didn't want to know what their duties are. It's appearing here in my search. If you scroll down as well, you will also find that it's searching for shareholders individually. 
Okay, I don't want shareholders individually. I want minority shareholders. I want specific search. And I can do that on Westlaw Asia and TR Westlaw. The most useful connector is quote, putting things in quotation marks. Up there, phrase connector. If you put things in quotation marks, it's gonna search for terms in the same order as they appear in the quotation marks. So automatically, your search results are gonna become less because you're refining your search. So, let's go back to my search. Now I'm gonna put minority shareholders in quotation marks. I wanna know what minority shareholders' rights are. Because, and because of that, I wanna probably search for it within the same sentence or paragraph, because it will be talked about. You can search for things within the same sentence with forward slash S, and within the pa same paragraph as forward slash P. I'll put it as same paragraph, forward slash P. But I don't want to know what their duties are. Percentage sign, but not. So you will, the first word that appears after a percentage sign will not be searched. So, you can see I'm searching across the same jurisdictions, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Malaysia, across the same content as well, cases, legislation, journals, current awareness. I had 924 results, but using terms and connectors, I now have 84. I've eliminated 800 results from my search. Use terms and connectors, and you can use them on TR Westlaw as well, to really focus your search, because you will spend a lot of time conducting these types of searches. Just again, go on to the help section at the top, and you will find a terms and connectors table here for you, which you can use on both Westlaw Asia and TR Westlaw. But my recommendation is that you go on to Westlaw Asia in the help section because it explains it in more details and gives you examples. Now, do you all remember natural language that we talked about on TR Westlaw? You ask it a question, it looks for alternatives of your words. You have something similar on Westlaw Asia. It's natural language, but it works a little bit differently. I mentioned that your default search on Westlaw Asia is a basic search. On the home page, if I select natural language search, my search now becomes natural language. And it works a little bit differently. I've selected Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. Let me select Australia as well. Let's put in more content here. But the same principle, ask it a question. Ask Westlaw Asia a question. Now before, when you do a basic search, I told you it's going to work, search for every single word in your search. If this was a basic search, it's going to look for what is the seat of arbitration. It'll look for every single word and will bring back more results. But if I do a natural language search and conduct a search, I've selected four jurisdictions, I'll conduct a search. Now, what natural language will do is that it will only search for the keywords in your search. It's highlighting of, but primarily what it's doing is searching for the keywords in your search. And in this case, the keywords will be seat and arbitration across four jurisdictions. But I only have 100 results. Natural language on Westlaw Asia will never return you more than 100 results. The whole point of natural language is that it's a good starting point for research. So where if you don't know where to begin, ask it a question. When you ask it a question, it will return some results. My recommendation is to look through the first 20 to 25 results. See if there's anything of use for you in that result, as it's a good starting point for research. That is the difference between natural language on Westlaw Asia and TR Westlaw. So to recap 
what we've just covered. We've covered the basic search. We've covered the terms and connectors. And we've covered natural language search. One other thing to tell you, in natural language, you cannot use terms and connectors. It has to be a question. Now, I've conducted searches on the home page. And I've searched across multiple jurisdictions and all content type. If you want to search for just an individual content type like cases, you can do so by clicking at the top right, top left, in the cases tab. You will get more search options for that content. Now, you have the format is the same when you click into these content. You have your search at the top, and you have your browse here at the bottom. If you want to search, when you search for cases here, you will search across all the jurisdictions you're subscribed to. So you will find Australia cases, Hong Kong cases, Malaysia cases, and Singapore cases. You can filter it as well. If I click on, say, for example, Hong Kong case law, now you will see at the top, I'm now searching for Hong Kong case law. The, my browse options have changed as well because it's listing all the law reports we have for Hong Kong. If you want to drill down even further to a specific law report, you can do so. Let's look at the criminal law reports. Now all the other law reports for Hong Kong will not be searched. Then you can go further by judgment here, by subject, and so on. And then you will be able to find individual cases as well. When you search under the Cases tab, your free text is your broadest search. You can put anything here. You can even use terms and connectors here. The same ones I use, minority shareholders' rights duties, as an example. Party names. You can put one party name if you know it. You can put both, but if you know only, know only one, you can put that. And you can put the citation as well. That is your basic search for cases. But you also have something called advanced search. By clicking on advanced search, you get a lot more search options. Now you can search by subject, company law, intellectual property law, tort law. You can also search by legislation title and a specific provision number. So the Contracts Act 1950. Always select the relevant one. It's going to be section for this type of legislation. 24. Conduct a search. This is a Malaysia statute. All the cases that are decided under this specific provision under the Malaysia Contracts Act 1950, all of the results are listed out for you here. You also, as well, have the option to search by judge. You can even search by court. And you could put date restrictions as well. I'll give you an example. Malaysia case law. Let's look at personal injury reports, advanced search. Let's see everything this year. Maybe there's nothing, but let's have a look. We have eight results for personal injury reports this year. So you can put these type of restrictions and conduct searches. Now, one other very useful feature that I want to talk to you about is something we call case analysis. So let me conduct some searches and find you a good case analysis functionality. I'll try and use the same search as I used before. Familiar search. Something we call case analysis. Now, the full transcripts of cases you will always find here, for example. These are the transcripts. But we also do something called case analysis. Now, this case is quite recent, actually, 30th April 2019. So there might not be a lot of content for it. But if I click on case analysis here, what case analysis does is that it summarizes the type of content that we have. It will give you a summary of the laws that are talked about this case. If this was a case decided in, say, 1990, for example, 
It will tell you the precedence used by the judge when formulating his judgment. It will also tell you the key cases that are citing this case. So subsequent cases that are referring to the case you are looking at. Because this is a 30th April 2019 case, I haven't given you the best example. But this case analysis functionality will also tell you the legislation cited by the judge. It will also give you references to any journal articles that talk about the case we're looking at. This is all done by the Westlaw team. Now, I'm sorry, I haven't given you the best example. Um, let me see if I can find one that's better for you. Try this case. Mm, not the best case. One minute, please. I want to give you guys the best example, so just bear with me for a minute. So this is a good example of a pretty detailed case analysis that we've covered. But this is the type of thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Other cases citing this case. These are subsequent cases that have come after a 1996 case that we're looking at. So this is the type of content that I want to highlight to you. The case analysis is a very useful function that we have, which lists out the entire history and legacy of a case. So you can use this to find out how the case has progressed to the courts. With similar content available on TR Westlaw with the key site flags. When you look at how the case has given the treatment the case has been received with the yellow, red, and white flags. For legislation on Westlaw Asia, what you will get access to are the following jurisdictions and types of cases. There's one very unique feature that we have on Westlaw Asia that I want to highlight to you for, case, uh, for legislation. I'm going to search for the crimes ordinance in Hong Kong. And this is available for Hong Kong and Malaysia legislation. If you ever see a red icon next to a case, a piece of section of legislation, Hover over it and it's telling you this has been repealed. So I'm going to hover over this section here. Now over here, this section has been repealed and it's telling me this is version 2 of 2. There's nothing here for this particular section. But this is version 2 of 2. If I click on this back arrow sign, it will take me to a point in time when it was in force. And you will actually notice this was in force for one day. But this was the law in Hong Kong for this particular section. We call this historic law versioning, where you can go back in time and you can see what the law was at a particular date in time before it was either repealed or superseded. This is available for Hong Kong and Malaysia content. Next, I want to highlight to you your journals. And we're going to breeze through the session now. By clicking on journals, I just want to show you the access of what type of journals you will get access to. For Hong Kong journals, you will get access to all of these law journals. And you will see them on TR Westlaw as well. But the browse functionality here is much better where if you click on a particular journal, you can actually see how long, how, how far back the journal goes to. When you conduct a search now, you will be searching for this journal. You can search free text, you can put in the article title and the author if you know it as well. And simply click into a particular year, in this case month, and you can see the browse functionalities available for you here. For Malaysia journals, you will get access to three types of journals. The first one being Asian legal business, which has really kicked off in the last year. 
You've also got the Law Review, and you've got the Malaysian Journal on Human Rights. For Singapore journals, you have access to Asian legal business. Now, the last thing I want to highlight to you on Westlaw Asia is something called Current Awareness. Current Awareness is updated every single day, and you have it access to it for all of these jurisdictions. The point of Current Awareness is to come here in the final stages of your research to see if there's any impact on what you're researching. In this case, what you will get access to is legal and regulatory news. There might be updates, say, for example, to the banking sector or to intellectual property law. You always need to be aware of any updates. This is where you can come here and find any updates to the law relating to any research that you're looking for. I'll give you an example. I'm going to search by banking. Now, this returning to me for banking and finance and these types of subjects, these are all the latest news articles relating to these subjects. Ha come here in the final stages of your research to see if there's any impact on the type of law you are researching. That is the whole point of current awareness. What will happen when you click into an article is that you will get a short abstract of the article and a link back to the full article as well. So this concludes our session on Westlaw Asia, and I want to open the floor to questions. Does anybody have any questions on Westlaw Asia? Does anyone have any questions on TR Westlaw? Any questions on anything? Okay, you're all pros at using Westlaw Asia and TR Westlaw now. So thank you all for your time, and wish you the best of luck.